OK guys, so now the attack and the release of the compressor. Here's a compressor. So we set our threshold. All right. If the signal goes over the threshold, then the compressor turns down the level to the new lower level set by the ratio. And the speed that it does that is set with the attack control. And then when the signal is no longer over threshold, the compressor stops compressing and the signal goes back up to the state where it's no longer turning the level down and the speed that it does that is set with the release control. Right, so the attack is how fast the compressor turns down the level and the release is how fast it turns back up again when it stops compressing. And the attack and the release between them they determine the envelope of the compressor. So what is the envelope of the compressor? Well, if you know my tutorials, you know that I always do things for complete beginners upwards, so we really need to get this concept of the envelope of the compressor down. right? And trust me, it'll help you to really visualise what's happening when you adjust the attack and the release on the compressor. right? So, the envelope of the compressor. Well, first of all, what is an envelope? Well, in audio, an envelope is a shape that tells us what some parameter of a sound is going to do over time. right? And in audio, probably the simplest envelope you can have is a simple amplitude envelope. Right? A simple amplitude envelope. Now, amplitude is just a posh word for loudness or volume. So an amplitude envelope is a shape that tells us what the loudness, volume or amplitude of a sound is going to do over time. Right? Now why is the shape called an envelope? Well, the simplest way to get your head around it is that it comes from the shape of an envelope like you send a letter in. Right? So there's your envelope, there's the pouch bit that you put the letter in, and then you've got the flap at the top, and you fold that over and seal it and send it. Right. Now it's about this shape at the top and the angle coming up and back down from the peak. Okay, now this is oops, this is time from left to right. Okay, this is time. Okay, so it's about this shape at the top, as I say. Now, in terms of the loudness, volume, or amplitude of a sound, right here and here, that is silence. Right? And then this angle coming up tells us, in terms of time from left to right, this the steepness of, of this angle tells us how fast the sound whoop, rises up from silence to its loudest peak. And then when it's reached its loudest peak, the angle coming back down tells us in time from left to right how fast the sound goes back down to silence again. Right? So this angle coming up tells us how fast the sound rises up from silence to its loudest peak. And that is called the attack part of the envelope. Right? And this angle coming back down tells us how quick in time from left to right the sound goes back down to silence again from that loudest peak. And this part of the envelope is called the decay. Okay, that's a simple one, two stage, two stage amplitude envelope. Stage one, the attack, stage two, the decay. Okay, now do you understand how this angle coming up and an angle coming back down tells us the time of how fast the attack is and how fast the decay is? OK, look, in, in case you don't, let's just get this down absolutely for any beginners watching, right? So look, there's time along the bottom there. OK. And let's say that is zero time, right? And we're working from left to right. So I'll put these little increments in, and we'll say that each of these is a tenth of a second increment. OK. So there's time on the horizontal axis, and then the vertical axis 
is loudness, volume, or amplitude. The maximum silence at the bottom. Okay. So starting at zero time from left to right, if our attack goes vroom, up at a really steep angle like that, right, to its loudest peak, then if we just follow that peak down from its position vertically, there's where the peak has been reached, follow it back down vertically and in time from left to right we can see that with this really steep attack angle the sound has risen up to its loudest peak from silence in one, just over one tenth of a second. Right. But if we have a less steep attack angle, like it takes more time now for the sound to attack up to its loudest peak because the angle isn't so steep. Right. And if we take from the peak and we work back down vertically from there. Okay, now with this slower attack with a less steep angle, to rise up to its peak from silence, it's now taking one, two, three, four, five, six tenths of a second. So the steepness of the angle tells us how fast it's attacking from silence to its loudest peak, the sound, the loudness of the sound. And then the decay is just the same in reverse. If we have a very steep decay angle like whoop, like whoop, that, coming back down really steeply from the peak, back down to silence, right? that's where the peak is, then in time from left to right it's taking one two tenths of a second for the sound to decay back down to silence. That's a fast decay. Okay. But if the angle of the decay isn't so steep, if the angle of our decay is like that, let's say, now we've got a slower decay time to, to come back down to silence. It's now taking from the peak here, it's now taking one, two, three, four, five, six tenths of a second to come back down to silence because the angle isn't as steep. So you see how the angle of the attack and the angle of the decay tells us the time of the attack, how long it takes for the sound to rise from silence to its loudest peak and how long it takes for the sound to decay back down to silence is determined by the angle of the decay. And that is a simple two-stage amplitude envelope. Right. So look, let's look at um let's look at an example of a snare drum. That's just you know, a two-stage amplitude envelope is fine to tell us what the loudness, volume, or amplitude of a simple sound is going to do over time. Right? A simple sound that just rises up and then decays back down to silence, like a snare drum being here. <laughs> right. Now let's look at that. Right, there's time again, starting at zero seconds, working forward in tenth of a second increments, and on the vertical axis is loudness, silence up to whatever the loudest is. Now we hit our snare drum, starting at zero time here. We hit our snare drum, and you know when you hit a snare, bam! It boom, rises up to its loudest peak almost instantly, like in just a thousandth or a couple of thousandths of a second. So our attack angle is almost vertical. We hit the snare and BAM! It rises up to its loudest peak almost instantly. Our attack angle is pretty much vertical. Now in a deadened room, the decay is going to be like like that. Right. We hit the snare, it rises up to its loudest peak almost instantly, almost vertical attack angle, and the decay in a deadened room is like <coughs> So we hit the snare and <coughs> gone. <coughs> gone. It's taken about one, two, one, two, three, four, four tenths of a second, just under half a second to decay to silence. Right? <coughs> gone. But if we now say that this is zero time here, we're starting from zero time there, right? And now we hit our snare in like a big concrete car park. We hit the snare, and still it rises up to its loudest peak almost instantly. So we hit the snare, and bam! It rises up to its loudest peak almost instantly. So our attack angle is almost vertical, like that. Right? The sound rises up to its loudest peak. We hit the snare, and bam! It rises up to its loudest peak. 
but in a large concrete car park type chamber we're going to have a much longer decay time we hit our snare and it goes It takes a longer time to decay back down to silence, a much longer decay time, so we have a much less steep angle for the decay. In a concrete car park, in our big concrete chamber, the snare is taking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 tenths of a second, a second and a half to decay back down to silence. Much, much less steep decay time because it's a longer decay time. So in a, in a studio room, we hit the snare. And it's gone. Gone. Half a second decay time. In a concrete chamber. Second and a half decay time. So there's simple two stage amplitude envelope. And it's 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 very elegant, isn't it? These two simple shapes tell us what the loudness volume or amplitude of a snare drum is going to do in two different types of room okay that's a two-stage amplitude envelope now up from there the next simplest envelope we can have is a simple three-stage amplitude envelope and again it's you can think of it like taken from an envelope you send a letter in but this time it's an office type envelope Right, so you know we have the pouch bit like that, but it's still about the flap at the top. But with an office envelope, the flap is different. It's like that, isn't it? Right, and then you fold that over and seal it and send it around. Now, this is still time from left to right. That's still time. Okay, but now we've got a three-stage amplitude envelope, right? With loudness, volume, or am amplitude, right? It's, it's still about this shape at the top. Okay, here and here is silence still, right? Okay, now this angle coming up, the steepness of this angle still tells us, wham, how long it takes the sound to rise up from silence to its loudest peak. That is still the attack, right? And then. This angle at the end still tells us when the sound stops uh, how long it takes for it to come back down again to silence. Okay, that's still the decay. But now we have this middle stage to the envelope, and that tells us once the sound has risen up to its loudest peak at the speed of the attack, this middle bit tells us how long the sound is held for before it stops and then decays back down to silence. And this new part of the envelope, that is called the hold or sustain. Right. So now we have a one, two, three stage amplitude envelope. But it's still really about the angle of the attack and the angle of the decay. Right tells us how fast it attacks and how fast it decays back down to silence okay you should have the concept of the envelope now but there's probably something you've noticed with the two and three stage simple amplitude envelopes I was showing you there they both got one thing in common they both go from silence or an off state up to the on or loudest state and then back down to silence or the off state same with the three-stage envelope, right? We go from off or silence up to the on state, the loudest, hold that on state, and then go back down to the off or silent state. Right? In both cases, we're going from silence to loudest back to silence. Silence to loudest back to silence. Right? So both those envelopes that I showed you, right? they are both... positive amplitude envelopes because we go from silence or a lower level up to a louder level and back to a silence or a lower level but if you think about it our compressor is working back to front isn't it our compressor isn't taking a signal and turning it up 
and then turning it back down again it, it's back to front All right. our compressor it's sitting there in the rack the signals coming in the input the compressor is doing nothing the signal passes out of the compressor at the same level as it came in but if the compressor sees the signals over threshold then it turns the level down to a new lower level set by the ratio it holds that compressed state for as long as the signal's over threshold and then when the signal's no longer over threshold it stops compressing and the level comes back up again to the point where the compressor is no longer turning down anymore it's back to front we're going from the signal at its natural level turning down to a new lower level and then turning back up again to the state where nothing's being turned down so our compressor's working back to front it's doing a negative amplitude envelope because it's, it's taking a signal and turning it down to a new lower level and then stopping turning it down huh? okay I'm going to introduce a new term for you here right let's let's just look at that now so our compressor is sitting in the rack right the signal is coming in at the input passing through the compressor and out the other side at the output now if our compressor is not compressing right the signal is not over threshold the signal comes in at the compressor passes through and out the other side unchanged as is doesn't get turned down nothing happens to the signal and when the compressor's like that it is said to be in a state of unity right or unity gain now unity or unity gain well the simplest way to define that is you've got a fader there's a fader look now if this fader is correctly calibrated and you set it to zero then the signal coming into the fader leaves at the other side of the fader at exactly the same volume level it ain't turned down it ain't turned up it passes through as is Right? And that fader is said to be at a state of unity or unity gain. So our compressor sitting in the rack at unity. The signal isn't over threshold. Right? So it doesn't turn the level down, it doesn't do anything to the signal. The signal passes through as is, it's at unity. But then the compressor sees that the signal has gone over threshold. So at that point it turns the level down. Right, and the angle here tells us how fast in time it turns the level down fast or slow so it turns the level down to the new lower level set by the ratio then if, as long as the signal stays over threshold it continues to hold that new lower level set by the ratio and then when the signal is no longer over threshold it stops compressing and it turns the level back up to the state where it's no longer turning down to the state of unity right? and the angle that it turns back up again fast or slow tells us how fast it's turning back up turning back up the level to the state of unity again where it's no longer turning the level down like that okay now this angle coming down that tells us how fast it's turning down the level to the new level set by the ratio and that is still called the attack how fast it turns the level down to the new lower level set by the ratio when the compressor stops compressing this angle its steepness tells us how fast the compressor is bringing the level back up to the state of unity where it's not turning down when it stops compressing and this part of the compressor's envelope is called the, not the decay, but it's called the release. Okay. And that's the envelope of the compressor. Now that just leaves one thing. Why is the last part of the envelope called the release and not the decay? 
Well, there's a simple reason for that. When I showed you the amplitude envelopes, the last part of the envelope was called the decay because it that the angle of that decay coming back down tells us how fast the loudness of the sound is decaying back down to silence in the room. We're talking about a parameter of a sound. But when we talk about the functioning of a piece of electrical equipment like a compressor, the last stage of the envelope is usually called the release because that release part of the envelope tells us how fast that piece of equipment returns to the state of no longer affecting the signal when it is released from functioning. So here at this point the compressor sees the signal is no longer over threshold. The compressor is at this point here released from the function of compression and this angle of the release tells us how fast the compressor returns to the state of no longer turning down the signal. How fast it returns to the state of not affecting the signal from when it's released from operation. And that's why we call that last part the release when we are looking at the envelope of a piece of equipment either making a sound or affecting a signal. Okay. So there you have it. That is the envelope of the compressor. Right. This angle tells us how fast it's turning down, and this angle tells us how fast it's turning back up to the state of unity again, when it stops compressing. That is the envelope of the compressor. Now you might think, well, that was a bit of a long haul, why did he need to show us all that? Well, you, this, when we move on to the next bit, and we put it all together, you'll see. Once you understand this concept of the envelope of the compressor, the shape, like that. It really helps you to visualize what's happening when you set different attack and release times. Right? Okay. For example, look at this image here. Okay? Take away the waveform. That is the envelope of the compressor. Okay, at the top here, this level, the highest level there, that is the compressor at the state of unity where it's not turning the level down. And then this is the attack time, this angle coming down, that's how fast the compressor is turning down. This is the new lower level set by the ratio, and then this angle is the speed of the release turning back up again to the state of unity. And you can kind of visualize it then, because the waveform being compressed just fits inside the envelope of the compressor. Okay, the signal goes over threshold here, the compressor turns down really fast, not quite fast enough to catch that first peak. But from then on, everything else is compressed at the full ratio and it's squashed down and fitted inside the new lower level set by the ratio there, like that. So it helps you to kind of visualise what's happening to the waveform of the material being compressed. All you've got to imagine is the shape of the compressor's envelope with whatever attack angle and whatever release angle set by the speed of the attack and release, you just fit that envelope shape over the audio and squash the audio down inside that shape and that's pretty much what the compressor is doing to the audio. Right. So we'll move, let's move on now and listen to some examples of attack and release time on different material and, and we can look at um, the different envelope shapes on a waveform of that material and it give us a better idea of what's happening. Right. Okay, so let's move on to the next bit.